the Hoka Mach 4, and the Nike Zumax Invincible Run. I don't know if these are the two best shoes of the year, but they're certainly going to be in my top five daily trainers at the end of the year. But how are these two shoes when it comes to recovery runs? I've got some beat up legs right now, so it's a perfect time to lace these shoes up and take them for a run. Six point five four miles, eight minutes, fifty nine seconds from one hundred and thirty five beats per minute today. Going for my recovery run in the Hoka on a Mach four. Going for that run the day after a ten k time trial, and I also ran a similar easy run in the Nike Zumax Invincible run. Taking these out for a run the day after a threshold mile or repeat workout this week. So perfect conditions to compare these two shoes head to head specifically looking at recovery runs. Now, before I give you my thoughts on these two shoes, I do wanna go over some disclosures. The Hoka Mach 4 was a shoe sent to me for the purpose of review by Hoka, and the Nike Zumax Invincible Run was a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Roadrunner Sports and Nike for the purpose of review. However, in neither event is anyone paying me to make this video or to include their shoes in a head-to-head -head battle, and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Hoka Mach 4 and the Nike Zumax Invincible Run. Let's start with the Mach 4. The Mach 4 has a wonderful engineered mesh upper, very breathable, very flexible, very comfortable as well. There's a lightly padded and ventilated tongue and moving around to the heel, we've got a big heel flare, but that entire area in the heel cup is nicely padded, not puffy, but nicely padded. In the midsole, there's a little bit of controversy on the internet, not controversy, dispute on the internet as to what the actual stack heights are for this. The numbers that I cited in my initial video for the Mach 4, I got off of Running Warehouse. They typically post stack heights for all the shoes that they sell on that site. It's still showing 35 millimeters of stack height in the heel and 30 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot, giving us a five millimeter drop and a weight of 8.0 ounces for my US men size nine. Now that midsole that we're running on is a ProFly midsole, which isn't a midsole material in per se, and it's more of a midsole system. So what you've got is that gray level, which is a softer, more cushioned material. And then you've got the white part of the midsole system, which serves a couple of functions. It's a little bit firmer, so you get a little bit more responsiveness and a little bit more support and structure to the shoe to counteract some of the squishiness that you would get from that gray layer. It also serves as the outsole because it's a rubberized EVA. So it's a ground contact grade material that you can run on. And so there's no rubber coverage on this outsole at all. In contrast, the Nike Zumex Invincible has full rubber coverage on the outsole. And that's because you're protecting all of that precious Zumex foam that's here in the midsole. Again, I'm gonna use Running Warehouse's numbers, which in this situation, I will say that they are different from the numbers that the manufacturer has provided, at least in the data sheet that I got. For the Zumex Invincible, Running Warehouse reports 39 millimeters of stack height in the heel and 30 millimeters of foam in the forefoot. But the numbers that I have received from Nike are 36.6 in the heel and 27.6 in the forefoot, very precise but still in either case, a nine millimeter drop. The total weight coming in on this shoe at 9.3 ounces for the US men's size nine, according to Running Warehouse. On the upper, we have what Nike is calling a flyknit material. I'm calling it a flyknit-like material. It might actually be flyknit fibers in here, but if you run in shoes like the Vaporfly 4% flyknit, or if you run in the Epic React, you're gonna think that this is very different than the material that was in those shoes. I feel like it's reinforced in a way that makes it feel less like flying it and more like a somewhat stiff 
upper. It's not as comfortable and forgiving in the forefoot, but it does give a lot more secure of a lockdown. Moving to the tongue, it's a lightly padded tongue. And then around the heel collar, it's lightly padded on the inside, but it looks extremely puffy with this kind of like, I don't know, design flare of cushioning that's on the outside of the shoe, parts that aren't actually touching your foot. You got a really significant heel clip that's back in here to give a little bit more secure of a fit around the heel and also some stability as you're landing on this super squishy Zoomax foam. So what is it like to run on these? Let's stick with the heels that since we're already talking about that already. The heel on the Zoomax Invincible, I feel like is a little bit unstable. So I think that while it very comfortable to land pretty much anywhere on this shoe because that Zoomax is that miracle foam that has driven the success of the Vaporfly 4%, the Vaporfly Next% percent, and the Alpha Fly. But it also I feel like it's a little bit too unstable for a lot of heel striking in here. So I'm glad that there is this heel cup to provide a little bit of that extra uh, structure in there. But for me, this shoe really wants to land like squarely on the midfoot and then roll forward. That's when the shoe is the most comfortable. You can get up on the toes on this shoe, but there's something about it that it's just not agreeing with the overall shape the way that the shoe is sculpted. You wanna be landing squarely in the midfoot and then rolling forward. On the other hand, in the Mach 4, it's almost impossible to land on this shoe wrong. There's something about this shoe and the way they've developed kind of like this crash zone in the heel. If you are fatigued or if you're on a recovery run and maybe your foot strike is a little bit more sloppy than it normally is and you're landing a little bit on the heel, it does a good job of cushioning that impact, but it also gently kind of like rolls you right back into the proper alignment. And so I feel like you're getting a very smooth flow through the gait cycle that works in a kind of like supportive way without being assertive. So it's not like forcing you to run a certain way. It's just saying like, oh, hey, you messed up a little bit. Let me fix that for you. So it's just really nice the way that this shoe, shoe works. You really can't land on it wrong, whether you're landing a little bit too far on the outside, on the inside. I just feel like this entire, this ProFly system, it's really surprising me every time that I run on it. It's just taking whatever you're giving to it and pushing that into some forward momentum in a nice, smooth, and fluid way. Now, both of these shoes, I typically like for when I'm running easy runs or easy runs that are gonna be maybe having a little bit of moderate paces in them. Cause I think kind of the natural kind of sweet spot for each of these shoes is a little bit faster than kind of your easy pace. So when you're into moderate paces, getting up to marathon pace, that's where I think these shoes really for me just feel the most natural and feel the most effortless. Both of these shoes though are also pretty great recovery shoes as well because of the fact that both of them have some very soft foams in there and both of them are very good at rolling you forward. In that midsole foam though, I definitely notice the Zoomax foam a little bit more and I really find that I enjoy the feeling and bounce that the Zoomax foam is giving me. Maybe it's a novelty thing because we've never had a pure Zoomax foam shoe without a carbon fiber plate in there before. And so I'm just really liking that sensation. It's very different, but also very fluid and comfortable for me. I'm really enjoying running and racking up miles in the Zoomax Invincible. But at the same time, I'm also still enjoying this ProFly midsole, that soft material top layer just absorbs the impact. Now the way that it is getting out of the problem of like you don't want to show that's too squishy, like you've fallen into like a giant pillow because then picking up your foot can be difficult. A lot of shoes try to solve that problem with a very bouncy foam so that way you don't pop out of that squish, but instead you get kind of a squish and roll, squish and roll in a way that I think works really well, both at moderate paces all the way down to your recovery paces as well. But when we're talking about those recovery paces, you're also probably talking about feet that are a little bit beat up because if you've just been in some racing shoes or putting in some hard work, your toes are probably feeling it a little bit. And so I do think that the Mach 4 is much better on the toes, giving you a little bit more room in the toe box than the Zoomax Invincible run does. I feel like the Zoomax run Invincible fits very much like a Nike running shoe, so not really any surprises there. But when it comes to feet that are already beat up and battered, you know, I'm gonna be reaching for at least for the upper in the Hoka Mach 4. While I'm trying to look at this from a recovery shoe battle perspective, I do think there's really two questions that we have to look at, which is the overall better shoe, and then we can answer the question of which is the better recovery run shoe. And maybe this is my way of kind of splitting the difference, but I think that overall, I'm gonna give the slight edge to the Nike ZoomX Invincible Run. 
I think a big part of it is that I'm just really enamored with this Zumex midsole foam and having just so much of it underfoot, perhaps it is novelty and perhaps my opinion on it will change by the end of 2021 once more of that novelty is worn off. I mean, I'm about 85, 90 miles into the Zumex Invincible, so it's not like it's a brand new shoe to me anymore, but maybe after that novelty wears off by the end of the year, maybe that'll change. But right now, despite some of the flaws that the upper has in the Zumex Invincible, I think it's the better shoe over the Hoka Mach 4. Now, on the other hand, from a recovery shoe perspective, because that midsole foam is so forgiving in terms of foot strike, and because that upper in the toe box is so much more comfortable for me, I'm gonna give the recovery shoe battle championship crown to that Mach 4. So those are my thoughts on the Invincible versus the Mach. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you agree, if you disagree, I'd love to hear about it. Or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do just about every day on YouTube, 3 p.m. Central Time. I'd love to talk to you guys about it there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs, and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?